Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? All right. I said I was going to be late, and yet I am early. <laughs> Welcome to everybody watching this after the fact. This is scenario number nine. Our campaign scenario continues on. This is session number six, A, <laughs> alternate <laughs> timeline. No, this is a. That's right. If you, if you have not watched the corrected version of. Uh, session 5 please go back that's on youtube session 5a i will leave it there in perpetuity uh but no this is now we're we're on the right track i hope and we're moving forward that was a great catch and uh yeah this is markedly different than what we were doing before so i got a shot baby I, i'm glad i caught it because i just you know I, I it just seemed like that was going i couldn't believe it was going as just off rails yeah just and this is much more interesting we've had the first Day battle of Murphy's Bro, probably some more fighting today, I assume. Mm -hmm. so. That's a good possibility. And then we've got some fighting going on uh, around Nashville. And uh, yes. yeah, much more exciting. Yes. I think much more interesting for our viewers. Totally unintentional, making it more interesting. Oh, that's right. That's right. We, well, we, mistake, we, aim, we aim to please, as it were. So, uh, new, new year, new options, new possibilities. Uh, in the game itself, the official date here is uh, December 2nd. We are on turn 10, starting this session. And uh, we, you see we've already done the random event, which is Enhanced Confederate Movement. So... I, all right. I thought I was going to mull on this all week, and you know what? I didn't at all. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just going to go for the uh, low-hanging yeah. fruit and go, well, these guys need to march fast, so let's go with that, right? Yeah, I took a, I took a quick look at it, and I was like, okay, um, I don't like this right. random event. <laughs> it's like, no, you guys can just uh, motor, and uh, you can create some prepared attacks without uh, having to set up an assault yeah, it's going to be yeah there are a couple of places uh, where i wish wish i was in more open field marchings for example lee's corps is now kind of tangled in a thicket here with mm, schofield yeah. and ruger and all them um but it, that may be useful for bait and brown to kind of get them and see if i can snag that 30 points this turn and mm -hmm. um yeah, I mean, and as you as you point out, scrolling down to uh, to Murfreesboro here, uh, that is a that is a standoff at this point. Now, as you as you learned the hard way with Milroy, uh, he he's he's pretty good for nothing. Uh, uh, he can move he can move units. He just can't do much with them. Um, no, yeah. no, um, it's, uh, there's nothing really to do about that. <laughs> so right, right now, Stewart's got them cut off from the safety of Fortress Rosecrans. Uh, so they're either going to have to do some real hard end around marching, or I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, I'm not sure how quickly I need to react to do something for Fortress Rosecrans because, as, as we discussed last time, there's the real the only option I really have with Stewart is to do a massive assault attempt, and even that's problematic, uh, because I would have to roll, what, uh, a really low, I'd have to want, roll a 1 or a 2, just to make sure that I could potentially get enough manpower in there. Uh, the other possibility is to wait out this turn and wait for them to heal, but I have a feeling that mm -hmm. you are going to uh, alter those plans, so uh, Milroy, you know, will will try to keep them busy. So I don't know what I'm going to do down there at Murfreesboro. Uh, that's the wonderful thing about the system, and each session with you, sir, is uh, <laughs> it's like a box of chocolates, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, look at this now. You know, I was so when when I set this up down in Murfreesboro, now I'm looking at it again. I'm like, you know, I probably should have bought those units in on a different hex. <laughs> Uh, and maybe done some things differently last session, but too uh, often it is that we look back and say, "I wish I yeah. had." Yeah. Monday morning quarterback. Right. You have enhanced Yeah. So let's uh, let's see. I don't think there's too much more to uh, kibitz about. I guess we can jump right in. Uh, we've done the random events. Uh, there's no more Union manpower, and oh, you have another reinforcement attempt, and then I'm going to get my one and only reinforcement. 
so you could potentially get Morgan into the fray today, or maybe some more Nashville units. Okay, so let's see. Uh, roll one die. Here we go. It's a two. Uh, no modifications, so I get one unit. Which is Morgan. Morgan, yes. He, he comes into Murfreesboro. He's a Department of Etowah unit, which means he is not under the control of Melroy. Correct. He is like Steedman. And find the right hex for him. I think shady, shady side and fifty four thirty three are the two options yep. down there, and then uh, I yep. guess on the railroad. I could bring him in at Maple Grove. Oh, okay. Yeah, it does extend all the way over. Uh, there. Yeah. Or um, I don't think I can bring him here because it's an Azak. So that leaves Shady Side and fifty four. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna put him in here. Um, Forty nine thirty four. Let me just double, double, triple check that. Sure. Yes. Sure. Maybe place in hex forty nine thirty four. Yeah. So yes, I'll put him there. Not in his op. Right on the railroad. And he's on the railroad. So that's perfectly acceptable. And that is perfectly awful because I was afraid you were going to do that. But we'll we'll <laughs> see what Morgan gets up to up there. Um, okay. Well, I get my my loan reinforcement and he gets the option there of anywhere from 107 to 104 or 114 i think i'll bring him into oh it's smith b not smith a smith a has already replaced the the fallen cleburne so we'll put him at 111 just in case we get some rain in the future maybe we can get him marching towards columbia for reinforcement uh and that is all for that all right, it's time for leader transfers. What would you like to move around? Uh, we'll start down here in Murfreesboro. I'll move Milroy over to Anderson. Uh, I'll look at my situation up here. Okay, I'm going to take Smith. Okay, he can get to Gerard. I'm going to move Thomas. I'm just not sure. I'm going to move Thomas to Stanley. Yeah, Stanley, I guess. That's it for my leader transfers. Okay. I think I will move. Hmm. Seeing that, I'll move Cheatham down to bait. And this is the tough one here. I figure if you're going to do something, you're going to do it anyway. So I'm going to move Lee to. Johnson. Um, let's see, Forrest. I'm going to move Forrest up to Buford. I think he can get there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, he could just get there. It's amazing how reflexively we keep things within ten, ten hexes. <laughs> I, I didn't try that, but. Uh, that's the way it works. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think Stuart will stay where he is for the moment. So that is all of mine. All right. Do you have any attachments? No, I don't believe I do have any attachments. So I think we just move on to the action cycle. As always, I wish you good luck in this session, sir. Mm -hmm. But not too much luck. Good luck to you as well. <laughs> uh, I was going to want rain, but we're not going to That's true. Today. All right. Here's our my initiative. Oh. oh. Stanley's going to activate Wagner and Whitaker to take one. Here's their movement. Oh. One die plus one, and there we go. Uh, Whitaker will go first. He'll go into Beachville. Uh, Wagner will just do one hex to their initiative. One again. Hey! <laughs> wow, look at that. There are no, <laughs> no streaks. Six Some, sometimes it just happens <laughs> that way. Two twos. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Uh, well, sensing disaster, Cheatham will activate Bait and Brown. And go to fatigue level one. And they're going to get a plus three to this roll because of the enhanced movement. So here it is. Mm -hmm. 
seven. Seven. Yeah, that's the scary thing. This yeah. Gets movement. All right. Now where to put them? All right. We're gonna have Hood and Cheatham switch over to Brown. We'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and then one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven to there. Uh, initiative. Snores again. Okay. This is a tough, tough nut to crack here. MacArthur is just in prime position. Let's move down here and we'll have Lee activate Johnson to two. He will have an extended march. Uh, here's his movement plus three. It's five. Uh, here's the extended march. He's okay, so what would Capron like to do? Let's say you've got a five. So plus five attack. Plus four, I think I'd stand. I have it as a plus five. Plus two tactical, plus one type, plus two ratio. Right. Oh, plus five, that's pretty... You know what? We'll, we will try it. We will, we will stand. <laughs> Oh, you do love to make me have hard decisions here. Capron, you're supposed to walk away. <laughs> Just throwing the cavalry manual away. All right, it's a plus five, so even if I roll a one and you roll a six, yes, I, I, I could get fatigued out and potentially lose a manpower, but I'm going to I'm gonna try it. I'm going to try a, a prepared attack. So uh, I have... I will use four of them. I'll have one left over for prepared attack. So as you noted, it's plus one for assault or prepared, plus two more for tactical, plus two more for a ratio of three to one. So here is uh, Johnson's plus five attack. There you go. Wow. Yeah. So plus nine. Sure left. That might wipe him out. Plus nine. It does. It does two dr. Whew. Well, that was the gamble of staying. But I kind of wanted to keep you in that box too. Oh well. Keep Ron is dead. We'll have to roll for his mount dismount stuff. <laughs> See, I'm saving your work. <laughs> All right. So we will advance into the hex, and then we have one left. So. And did you increase my manpower loss? I did. I did. Okay, you, are, thank you. you are sitting at nine manpower losses right now. Now, do I want to use the extra one to go? Oh, that could have gone the other way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah we'll, we'll pull back to 47.13 there. Okay. Uh, initiative three. Four. That one's mine. Hatch will activate Stuart and Croxton. Both to fatigue one, no exhaustion. Here's that movement roll. First die, second die. They can go 12 hexes. Stuart will go first. One, two, three. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve to stump and hatch and croxton. They'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight to there. Initiative five, two, two, uh, Smith will. With Garrard, we'll attempt an assault on Smith A. He goes to T1. Here's the attempt. Does not come off. Initiative. Six. Three. Okay. 
The fates really we'll want try that again. Really want Smith to do it. <laughs> try that again. Again, uh, Smith uh, attempt assault on Smith A. It does not come it, off. It does come off. Remember. Oh, it does come yeah. off. Yeah, that's right. We we discovered that many, many, many sessions. Ago. Yes. Ah, oh, sadly. Okay. Uh, so this is Garrard against Smith. So the type is going to be a plus one on assault. The tactical is even. We both are a three. Uh, ratio, I have nine to your four. So the ratio is a plus one. Uh, artillery is going to be three guns to uh, two. two. So it's a minus one for artillery. And now for hexes covered, I do have all six hexes covered, uh, but one comes off, so it's going to be a flank of plus three. So what I have is uh, four, five up, and one down for plus four final. Sounds about right. Uh, assault, uh, ratio, flank, that's five up, and one down for artillery, yep. Okay, so here's my assault roll. Three. And here's my defense. Five. So it is a plus two. Seven. Plus two. I attacked with nine. And a plus two is a one DA for me. And just a DR for me. But I am going to take something on the retreat. So. Disorganize. He's done for the day. Uh, I believe I can go looking at the retreat chart here. The first one has to be one of those two. So 5305 is going to. So let me, uh, let me do all this here first. I got one, two, three. Uh, the first one has to be here, which is farther away, but it's still in a Zoc. Uh, so that is 4A. So I'm going to lose a manpower there. You still get a net on the, uh, the manpower loss for that. So he goes down one. I take a manpower loss. And then the second one can go anywhere, um, but both are in your Zoc. Um, and if I go into a friendly one, if I go into where bait is, then I do not lose the manpower because it's a zero because of the dot. So, because that's on chart two. Either e either one would be 4A or the two on chart two. Yep. Okay. Yep. So that, uh, let me slow Smith down for a moment. Well, that was a good attack, though. Uh, I, when, you <laughs> when you got the, the first six... The fist pumping cannot come through on the audio because I was muted, but it was there. <laughs> <laughs> and I was breathing very heavily. Right. Okay. Well, that was... Well, yeah, you certainly, you know, that's... I'm still going to have to wait on my three units, three divisions. Um, okay. So, I think we're ready for initiative. Okay, initiative roll. Four. One. Me again. Well, let's continue moving. Stanley will activate Wood and Whitaker. Whitaker will need a extend die roll. Use their movement one die plus one. They can go four hexes. We'll move Whitaker first, so here's his extend die roll. Four plus one is a five, so he's okay. One, two, three, and four to there. We can go one, two, three, four there. Initiative five. Let's see. I am not going to get the initiative today. Stan will activate Wood and Wagner. T2. Here's their movement. One die plus one. They can go five hexes. Wagner will go first. One, two, three. Wood will go one, two, and three. And we'll stop there. Uh, initiative three. Chores. 
Alright. Hood will activate brown to two. Here is the movement. And here is the extend. He's okay. And then just go zock to zock to there. Initiative. Five. One yours. I believe I'm going to have Cheatham activate all three units. And uh, here's their movement of plus three. It's four. So, um, Bait will go first, and we will transfer to Bait. Here's his extended march. He's okay. What would Hatch like to do? Five to two. You cheat him, so it's going to be a plus one. So I'm going to be prepared, so it'll be a plus two. So plus three attack. I'm not going to be able to stand for long, so it doesn't make, I don't think, too much sense to keep fighting. So he will do a cab retreat here. Okay. He's going to go to disorganization. There's the retreat roll, two, which is, I think, nothing for you. And oh, he picks up a fatigue as well by road. And two, one, two, three, four. He'll go to there. Okay. So that is, I have three remaining with them. One, two to there. And then yeah. place the flanks refuse for the last one. Smith's extended march now a plus three. He's going to lose a manpower. And he will just join them. And then Brown, his extended march plus one. He is also going to flip. And go to there. That works. Initiative. Five. Two. Yours again. Stevenson will march. Come out of his entrenchments. Go to fatigue level one. Here's his movement. Plus two. Five. One, two, three, four. We'll stop there. Initiative three. One, yours again. We'll have Lee activate Johnson and Stevenson. Out of fatigue. Here's their movement plus three now. Five. Wish I could really take advantage of this uh, speedy movement, but it is not to be. Um, Johnson's extend plus one. He's okay. We'll go one, two, three, four, and five. And Stevenson, one, two, three, four, and five. Initiative five. One, yours again. I'm going to move, before I forget, I'm going to move Smith B way back over here. going to march him, <laughs> since he's got some speedy movement potential. Um, plus two to this. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Mount Pleasant. Uh, initiative, one. Hey, one. all right. Yours again. Smith B. T level two. No late rain. Yeah. <laughs> movement. Four, five, one, two, five. three, four, five, and uh, initiative. Ooh, six. Doors again. Smith to three. Here's his movement, and it is four and extended march. Ah, he flips. <laughs> Every one of them pays the price on that for rushing. All right, one, two, three, and four. Back over here. Uh, initiative two. Six. There we go. Hmm. <laughs>
Uh, we'll activate Jay Moore, fatigue one. You can go five hexes. Uh, I think he is just straight up because he's not in. Oh, right, right, right. You can just go four. Correct, correct, yeah. One, two, three, four to there. Initiative two. One. Okay. Uh, Wilson will activate Coon and Low. Here's their movement. First die, second die. So they can go nine hexes. Two, three, four, five to there. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine to there. Initiative five. One. Well, as much as I'd like to go after Clayton and Bell, uh, Schofield is going to activate Ruger and Cox. Cox will need an extended die roll. One die plus one. Go six hexes. Ruger will go one, two, three, four, five, six to there. Schofield will go one, two, three, four, five, six to there. Initiative two. Five. Um, French will activate to entrench. To Appetis. Yep. Initiative. Five. Four. Yours again. Bait will entrench. So fatigue level three. Appetis. Initiative. Four. Three. Yours again. I'm going to pass. Okay. We'll activate Morgan down in the Murfreesboro area. Teague one. Here's his movement. One die plus one. No, one, just one die. He can go six hexes. Way to go, General Morgan. Or whatever your name is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Initiative one. Hmm. So if I did an assault right now, I'd get plus one for the assault, a plus one for the ratio of two to one, and then minus two for the artillery. So it would be an even attack. So before Morgan gets in there and reinforces it, I should make the attempt. So Stuart will attempt an assault with French uh, on Fortress Rosecrans A there. So here's the assault attempt. It comes off. Now, like we said, it's a plus one for the assault, plus one for two to one intrinsic ratio, then minus two for your clear artillery. So it's an even die roll. I'm looking for a plus two. Here goes. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. So minus two. Stay. It's just getting better and better, man. Minus two on five is a 1D. Insult injury. Pew, pew. And, and flips. And okay, so we are now tied once again on manpower losses, but that is an extreme advantage for you. So initiative. Six. No, you win. There's the six I needed. Well, well, well. Once again, Murfreesboro is becoming a thorn in the side. Let's activate Walful. And let's do his uh, his march of plus. He'll activate with Stuart, so he'll get a plus three. That's a six. Extended march. Oh. That's brutal. That's fine. This is fine. The flames lick around my body. It is just going to be a negative one now, 
if I make that attack there, or I could make it against Thomas. Uh, yes, leave your comments down at the bottom about how I managed to muck this up. <sighs> Negative one, so I would have to get a six, and you would have to get a no better than a two. That's a lot of dice. To You're looking at if I if I, if I did the if I did the attack on the fort, it's plus one for prepared, uh, and then minus two for the artillery. So it'd be a negative one attack, and I would just have to roll a six, and you'd have to roll really low. But, you know what? What the hell? We're here. Let's do it. <laughs> so, uh, I needed I needed the ratio. I didn't get the ratio. But that's fine. Uh, so here's the attack on Rosecrans once again. Send them charging the guns! <laughs> yeah. I'm vexed. I'm very vexed. So, yeah, it's a zero, a negative five attack. Uh, we may be coming to the end of this scenario quickly. Negative five is 2D. Uh, I should have waited. I should have waited. Okay. So, so now I'm at 11 Z's, and I don't have enough forces to, to do this all day, so, uh, your initiative, probably. Oh, did you roll? I did, yeah. I can roll a one, because oh. I'm rolling ones yeah. all day. Okay. Yeah, um, and sixes for extended marches, just the complete opposite. Yeah, we'll go ahead and take Morgan Fatigue 2. Uh, we'll roll die. You see how far he goes. Wow. He'll go one. He has five left. Yeah, Morgan's just going to stop there. Uh, initiative one. Yours. Pass. Uh, Milroy will take Anderson to Teague one. I, he's going to march. He's not going to attempt an assault because an assault is actually worse odds than marching. So he's going to march. So he gets six he'll at he will attack waffle with the prepared attack so that's going to be four to one the ratio is plus well the type is plus three uh the ratio is plus three uh tactical now is even because i'm really uh there i have all six hexes covered one hex comes off so the final flank is a plus three artillery is going to be a minus two the final is going to be finals of plus five. Go ahead. Okay. Just a die roll attempt. Two. <laughs> One. So let's. That's plus six. I think that's wipeout, right? No, you're you're still there. It's a one dr. All right. B. Another victory point. Manpower loss. We'll go one, two, three, four, five, and six. And Milroy will stay put. He won't dance into Toll House. Uh, initiative one. It's yours, no matter what you get. <laughs> six. Pass. Okay. I will pass as well. Okay. Let us uh, hit a recover. Uh, so before we do all the various and sundry things here for your Union Cavalry phase, I think, if I'm being very pragmatic here, that I can save us a lot of trouble and effort here and just say we can call this one because I... While I got fight in me, it's just, uh, it's, I'm too scattered, and I got, my forces are really weak, and you're getting your second wind, and you're, you're building these incredible flanks, you've got me in a box, and Murfreesboro is now once again off the table, so my, my first and best hope early on for getting some ongoing points has now been dashed by my failed assaults on Fortress Rosecrans, 
so I, I, I'm going to be realistic. I don't see getting the 30 points right now because you've pushed Hood back. And uh, auto victory is way, way off in the distance, uh, even after winter weather. Uh, and you've crushed my spirit, sir. <laughs> so what? I didn't mean to do that. Well, no, um, no. I mean, it, all in good fun, but it's just like you, uh, you had this. Uh, so this day was just textbook of uh, right. For, you got the first initiative, which okay, well, we can roll with that. And then you got a really great string, um, and you managed to move those forces and and get them around hood and of course i was hoping to get some really great uh, movement rolls but uh, they were all onesie twosie three and yeah. uh, so i wasn't really getting the benefit of the enhanced movement uh, it did there with bait and brown it got him up there but that really was just kind of quarry for your trap because hatch got the 11 you know so he, he got to move 12 oh. miles to get into the rear there so uh you trapped me early and then you managed to get those forces up there uh quite well and uh, even even my feint at moving Lee down uh, with Stevenson, trying to get around there, once I got him out of the the, the thicket, uh, you managed to kind of counter all that by getting all the forces up there to block the the eastern approaches to Nashville. So I, you know, I just I don't see it, man. Um, I you tell me otherwise if you think so, but uh, I, I think you got this one pretty well. I I would hate to be in your spot <laughs> and try to play this out. I mean, the only reason to play it out would be if this was a tournament, I think. Right. And, and you're trying to, you know, make it. Uh, but the manpower losses you suffered. Oh, down in good God, control. yes. I mean, I'm at I'm at negative um, 33 and positive uh, 18. So I'm 15 in a hole. And I still have, I mean, and I've only got... Uh, oops, I put the wrong thing there. Uh, I've only got... Point wise, uh, 15 points. So I'm at net zero right now, <laughs> and uh, you know, winter winter starts in three or four days, and that's yeah. that's a real tough nut to crack at that point. So personally, I'm content to Hood sends over his sword to the Rock, a Chickamauga, who he's heard so <laughs> many good things about George Thomas, uh, with his regards, and says that uh, he he will exit the Nashville vicinity and head down towards Tullahoma uh, because I I just, I think congratulations are in order. I, I cannot see a way that I can pull this out here in the next 10 days or 12 days because I'm not getting any positive points. All I'm doing is digging a hole deeper and deeper. Not even through my own design. I mean, of course, the Murfreesboro, that was two failed attacks, but you're getting some some great attacks on me and, and you're flushing me out and I'm getting retreat losses. So I cannot afford to do that for three more days, you know? So I think, uh, kudos to you. You've, you've played this masterfully as the union. Yeah. And in terms of what I was, I almost went after Bell and Clayton down there. Right. I, yeah. When you said that, um, I was like, Oh good. He's leaving me alone for a minute. <laughs> but, uh, I felt like, okay, you know, I, I don't have to attack to win. I I just don't have to lose. And I felt like going back and uh, setting up, as you said, blocking the eastern approaches, which I've now got plenty of guys to do. And uh, I've got you uh, Cheatham with Bait and Smith now, as you said. Uh, Cheatham's core now is in a, in, in, as you said, in a, in a box, which is something you've taught me to do. Is yep, keep them in a box. Just uh, control the narrative. Just, uh, yeah. Force, force them to go where they don't want to go. Force them to move if they have to attack, which is kind of what I've set up here. And if you do, then go ahead and collapse in and set some flanks. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I, I think, I mean, you have to get a string of units to come up. But even when I had, I had a string of four or five of them there, and I was like, well, I, I'm really hoping for a pass. I need to catch my footing. I need to catch my breath. And I was hoping, I was waiting, because there were some times there where I was hearing you think about it. And I was like, okay, he's about to pass, because he doesn't want to move any of the Union forces and get them overly fatigued. So I was waiting for you to have it and to pass it, and then I was going to pass immediately. But then I kept winning it, and I was like, all right, I'll move Smith. Okay, I'll move Smith again. I'll move Smith again. And then all that time, I was wary. I, I mean, I knew once Morgan arrived, once Steedman got that telegram that 
you know, yeah. down for reinforcements and they showed up at Maple Grove. I was like, oh boy, you know, he's going to mess with Loring. And then you got the six. I was like, oh, of course you got the six. Yeah, that and was, you raced for yeah, the fortress. Was... So, yeah, I was going to sit and wait one more turn, let him freshen up, and then make my play on that. But as soon as you got Morgan into into place, you forced my hand. And, and boy, howdy, yeah, did you force my hand. Yeah. You know, to yeah, to the I mean, tune they're, of, they're, of they're... minus nine victory points, you know. Yeah, the die roller was not kind ah, well, at all. Uh, we're not going to complain about uh, the die roller because it is what it is. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, uh, <laughs> and I think playing as we're doing it with single die rolls does keep that, I think, balanced because it doesn't, you know, I think that does even it out. Oh, it still hates me, but, yeah, to be I, sure. I, I, <laughs> uh, it still hates you, yeah. It just hates you in a very That's right. Way. It's just more... Um, <laughs> Yeah, the, the only chance I, I guess I could see would you have to, and I don't think it's possible because I've got so many guys now, uh, would be to swing up the Murfreesboro Pike. Yeah. I mean, if you get some initiatives with your Cav, you know, bring Forrest in there and try to punch that way. But then you're, as I've discovered, you're tied up against the map and it's, you know, there's just too many attacks that I can make yeah. any force yeah. coming in. Um, and, and, and if we're using this as kind of the, the scenario wrap-up, folks, uh, looking back on all ten turns uh, that we did complete of this, I, I can't say there was any one pivot point, or at least I'm not going to beat myself up too much on anything that I did improperly. I thought the Natchez Trace Gambit worked, but you got you, you just always had some clutch moments there with, with Hatch getting up there and blocking Hillsboro, and uh, you've just just at critical moments managed to slow me down or the rain managed to slow me down or there was just one little road bump that threw off my timetable by a day or maybe two days and I think if things had gone just a little bit I mean it, you always thread that needle with this game oh if only I'd gotten the four instead of the three you know that's going to happen all the time and you can mitigate that to a degree, but there are just some clutch moments where you had a perfect timing or you executed something very well, either a good die roll or you just put them in the right spot. That it, All it does, I mean, it, it's a little teeny tiny pebble in the road, but it knocks the juggernaut over on its side for Hood because you you have such tight tolerances as the CSA in this one that yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know at, it, at what point you have to pivot and then start going for manpower losses or just beat the hell out of them. You did that early on when you played and I thought, okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll do rope a dope. I'll come back and then you'll hit me and I'll come back and I'll come back. And then even when you got the two auto potential auto victories by, by occupying, it was the counter attack. They catch yeah. you. Dark. So for the yeah. CSA, I don't know what the winning strategy is for this, other than rolling sixes all the time, except for extended <laughs> marches where you want to roll one. Um, um, well, I, I think for me that the, the pivot, there, I think there were two, and it was a random events pivot points. Um, night marches. <laughs> the night marches, uh, especially the second one, because the second one, because you had me, I mean, you were talking about putting units in a box. You had me in a three-sided box. I did. You had a right. core to the east, yep. refreshed. You had a core to the west, refreshed. You had a core to the south, refreshed. And you had forest to the east, refreshed, to slam the fourth box. Right. To, and and uh, I got that night march and then got great movement rolls. Mm -hmm. And I left, you know, I was able to get... Uh, everybody but the ninety, the ninety first Indiana, out of that box. Yep. And so you lost a day or two, yep. that, having to chase back up. Again. That is what uh, is known as was, stealing a march in the thick of yeah, the night. Yeah, and that was that. That I think was really the first one was nice because I was able to kind of get my guys organized right. at Columbia. The second one though was because what I was trying to avoid, I you know I guess I took my cue from General Thomas. Well, actually, or to Schofield, I, it was Schofield. Don't yeah. let them get between you and Nashville. That's right. And I think historically, from a narrative perspective, that night march was very timely. I don't know if it was two nights, but yep. Schofield did that. He got them from yep. Spring Hill to Franklin. So yep. we are here to reinforce the narrative of history and time. 
yeah. but uh, yeah, I mean, I I don't feel bad losing because Confederates lost in this battle anyway. So we, you know, we are just reinforcing it, it, what it is. But I, I just I, I'm curious for those, and this is where you know you guys have been a little shy out there on the feedback. We have a few commenters, but for those of you who are watching this and finishing this out, this is our second playthrough. I really want to hear some discussion in the comments section there about I have played the campaign, I have won using you know X Y Z strategy, because um, I think there's some really good discussion to be had here. Uh, at, since this is a new enough module that we're all still learning, that there are some there are some tropes that you can use for each side. Union just seems like you just got to take it and then and move counter move move counter move right. Um, to block Nashville approaches, but uh, I, I I thought yeah, I mean I thought when you went down to Murfreesboro, uh, and I, I again another turning point. I got reinforcements just when I needed. Them. Of course you did. <laughs> just when I needed them. Um, I mean it was like, man, I've got to get Nashville. Oh, I do. Oh, I've got to get Murfreesboro reinforcements, and I did. Yep. I mean, it was uh, again that was very narrative based. Mm. That was exactly how it played out historically. Is that the Union got reinforcements just when they needed them? So that was that was another crucial thing. And it was, uh, but yeah, I'd like to know how if people. I mean, right now I think probably a lot of people played this campaign game because of the various tournaments. Going well, on. I and I know a lot of people have soloed it. Uh, you were, I mean, early on you had mentioned that you'd kind of. Uh, I don't know if you had soloed this one, the the campaign at all, um, but at least you. I, I kind of had played it out a little bit, and uh, and I really thought going to Murfreesboro is a good strategy, long term strategy. If you grab Murfreesboro, then that. Uh... It would be a good strategy if there were two factors. I mean, I'm, I've got the turn track up, and you can see we had. Four Four or five days of late rain, and f yeah. in four of those five days, rain did actually occur. I think on the fifth, the fifth one, it did not occur. Stewart got some good movement rolls to get north of the duck, or to to the yeah northeast of the duck, and that's where I had you wandering. That's when you mentioned the the three sided box, and I was just kind of, I was pushing you f forward towards Nashville, and I thought that was the high water mark for me. I had you know, Forrest on a tear, he was threatening your flank, everything was great, and uh, if I had not gotten a rain roll, or if perhaps maybe yes. on one of them I had been a little more aggressive of moving towards north to Murfreesboro, or, you know, if if that movement enhancement for CSA comes in, that's gold, and, that's gold, Jerry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know? yeah, that was... That would have been... It was like, yeah. again, I think here, the random events for you just completely broke the wrong way even when you got this enhancement it was kind of at unfortunately not a great time for right. you because you were kind of close yeah i was close for battle you were punching now yep. you know yep. it was now you were, you were in close and you needed um, i needed some open field marching opportunity early on yeah but i you know yeah. it is it is as it is it's what it is right. yeah. <laughs> um well, this was a pleasure to play this twice. Uh, it is, again, we're going to, I, I want to tip my hat to Joe Balkowski and Chris Withers and Ed Beach and uh, and all the you know folks that developed this, Mike Bellis and, and playtesters uh, who have gone through this. Um, and again, many thanks to Alberto Romero for his fantastic module to automate a lot of the little, you know, fiddly things that we would normally do. And uh, I think this now has set a precedent for us as we move forward. I believe we, you and I have discussed uh, our, our future, our next module that we're going to do is uh, we will continue. We'll go back into our timeline where we left off and move <laughs> on to uh, Here Come the Rebels, which is my favorite uh, module of all these. So we will be working oh, through excellent. Antietam and we'll, we're going to go back to the, the kindergarten class of South Mountain. Oh, that's so adorable. <laughs> so that'll probably be our next one. Uh, and then because we have set the precedent of a campaign, I think you and I can easily look forward to perhaps doing the Maryland campaign as the, as oh, the completion excellent. of that. So I, and that's a lot of great North South fun marching, uh, for, for both sides. So any, any final thoughts before we put a pin in this one? I have to agree with you completely about uh, thanking the folks who put this game together. Again, what I like about this, you know, I'm not a war gamer, so I'm, you know, everybody caveat that. 
Uh, but what I like about the system is it does put you, in my mind, in the mind of the people in command, the Hoods, the Schofields, the Thomases. And certainly this campaign game, but also the, the basic scenarios. I mean, you're, there are things that you're, you're worrying about the same things they did, and that enhances the history. And in this campaign, I knew almost, I, I knew the broad strokes, but I didn't know, you know, compared to Gettysburg or Antietam or, you know, the wilderness, you know, I knew next to nothing about this campaign. So it was great to learn about uh, something I didn't know very much about. Oh, um, I absolutely agree with that. I, I knew almost nothing about the whole 1864 campaign. Well, so I, this is great. I, I kind of knew there was a Spring Hill, Spring City, <laughs> which which town in Tennessee was it again? <laughs> thing that happened, uh, but that was about it. Um, uh, so this was uh, so I'm glad they did this, and I hope they can can maybe find some of the smaller campaigns that people aren't aware of. I don't, I don't know where they're heading next after they do the reprints that they're working right. on. But, um, this was great, and uh, also a couple other little shout outs. Uh... One for the Multiman Publishing for doing this. Uh, this is, you know, for for the COVID times and having you know production and supply chain issues and everything, getting this out and into the hands. Now it's been out for about a year, and it's really sort of coming into its own. So I, we hope you are enjoying this as much as we have going through all of the individual scenarios twice and the campaign twice, and. Take this opportunity, of course, there's some great books out there. Roger and I talked about two specific ones about this campaign. Uh, I read the Wily Sword one, the uh, the Confederacy's Last Hurrah, and you read the yeah. Winston Groom one, which was, uh, what was the name of the Winston Groom one? Uh, I'm really bad about that. <laughs> the other one by Winston Groom, yes. Uh, so those are two really good overviews of this. And there are some fantastic other videos here on YouTube by the Battlefield Trust. Uh, they were going through uh, episodically and talking about the entire lead up to the uh, 1864 Nashville campaign. And they take you all the way through it from the Columbia Duck River approaches all the way through Spring Hill and Franklin and all the way up to the Battle of Nashville and the Battle of Negley and, and all of that. So do check those out. And if you could take a moment to click the like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this entire series, uh, that will keep you informed as we move forward. Onward and upward, sir. And hopefully... Uh, Shrouds of Glory. Shrouds of That's Glory by book. Winston Groom. That's it. Yep. <laughs> That's right. Had to look it up. <laughs> uh, of course, he, he gave us Forrest Forrest Gump as well. Thank you again for all your support. If you uh, want to contribute monetarily, there are links here below, and we're showing some of our current uh, uh, supporters, so we thank you very much for your ongoing support. And Roger, I cannot wait until we meet at the passes of South Mountain. Yeah, I'll, have to, I'll start reading. All right. Thank you. You're welcome, and uh, we will see you all here next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.